Hello singers, I'm Marina Castillo. Welcome to my channel where you learn to sing for real. Singing is not a competition. You might compete sometimes, but singing itself is not a competition. And that's what I want to unpack in today's video. I'm going to have several questions for you to just think about. Why do you sing? What is your singing story? When did you decide you enjoyed singing? Do you always feel like you're competing with something or someone? If you're just beginning your singing journey, you may feel intimidated by famous singers or, or other advanced singers who have been working on their craft for many years and mastering their skill. And maybe your idea of success is, is to sound exactly like your favorite singer. Perhaps you enjoy going to karaoke. And so when you do, do you feel like you're in competition with the other singers? If you're taking voice lessons, do you feel like you can never be quite good enough because the teacher constantly moves the line of excellence every time you achieve a new skill? Because that's what we do. Do you watch singing competition shows and mentally chime in with the judges and decide who is good and who isn't? Do you think you have to have a certain level of skill before you are worthy of singing in public? Have you ever entered a singing contest and either won or lost, but it was based on the judge's personal taste? These are a lot of questions, but I'd like to help you reframe, reframe your thinking a bit about this. I want you to think about why you wanted to sing in the first place. When you were a child, you probably sang for the fun of it. Most of us did. Then maybe you thought you'd like to pursue singing and, and become more skilled and, and learn to sing better. And maybe even perhaps try to make a living at it. At some point, the joy turned into work and a feeling of never being good enough comes into play. Maybe you have felt like you don't have the right to sing because you're just not as skilled as the others. So I want you to go back to that feeling of when you were a child. Singing gave you joy. Singing might have soothed you when you were not happy and it lifted your spirits. It just felt good to sing. Now, these days, it seems that singing has become so competitive that you're either good or you should just go home and be quiet. And these reality TV shows have really driven this home. They show those auditions like on American Idol and they're very cringy and the singer is told that singing is not for them and that they should just give up. They're trotted out for our enjoyment of them being humiliated in front of millions. I find this very disturbing. In case you don't know, the reality singing TV shows are not talent contests and talent has very, just a small part of, of the outcome of these shows. And to put it rather bluntly, they're pretty rigged and I have been informed by this um, by more than one insider. They manipulate the whole process and they create a show for our enjoyment and our entertainment. These shows have become so popular that we may have come to believe that the way to success and fame is only through these shows. There was a time that this wasn't so. And so if a student comes into my stu studio for their first lesson and I ask them why they wanna take voice lessons and why do they wanna improve their voice? And if their answer is, well, I wanna win The Voice or American Idol or America's Got Talent, then I have to wonder if they don't win, then are they a failure? Before these uh, singing shows became a thing, people just worked on their craft and met with other musicians and rehearsed, and then they'd find opportunities to sing in public and hone their skills and maybe do some recording and, and, and become more accomplished vocalists along the way. And they learned from listening to the greats and and taking from that and then finding their own way and finding their own unique individual voice. Think about a favorite singer from the past and wonder, would they have made it the, made the cut on the voice? Think about Bob Dylan, Stevie Nicks, 
She's awesome. They're all awesome. Adele. What about Nora Jones? Would the judges have said something like this? Bobby, you sing so nasally and, and, and you're a bit pitchy. Perhaps you should go back to Minnesota and finish school. Give it up now before you embarrass yourself anymore. Stevie Nicks, darling. You're very cute, but you sound like a munchkin, and, and I don't think you have enough range. I need to hear more money notes. Sorry, go home and work on that and come back next year and audition again. What would they say to Adele? I don't know. Adele, when you go high, you really you squeak. You're not in control of your voice. I don't think you have what it takes. What would they say to Nora Jones? You're so breathy. I was listening for a belted note and it never came. I was so disappointed. And you're so relaxed that I don't think you really want this. Why do we love a singer? It's, there's something about them that moves us, right? We don't listen necessarily for their technical skill. Technical skill is important. I teach technique all day long. But if the joy goes out of the singer, maybe it's time to rethink why we're doing this. I want you to remember that you are unique and your voice is different than any other on the planet. You bring something different than anyone else can. The only person you're in competition with is yourself. If you feel you need to work on your skill and become better, whatever that means to you, that is awesome. Everyone can learn to sing better. When they tell a singer that they can't sing and that they should give up, that is simply not true. Like any musical instrument, the voice can be trained and become skilled. And I think it's abusive to tell anyone not to sing. And when it comes to these singing contests, it amazes me that one person can be picked over another. How do you judge who is better? It's a matter of personal taste. I might like a singer over another and my friend might pick the other. So when a winner is finally chosen is the one that is probably the most popular, but does that make them better? Does it make the runner up a loser? You know, it's easy in the athletics to see who wins the race. Uh, one person crosses the finish line first. You can see who the winner is. And let's see, I don't know anything about dance at all. But I hear phrases like, oh, you didn't keep your toe pointed or you weren't aligned properly. I don't know. They have parameters that they go by when they judge them. But dance is also an art that can be expressed in many different ways. But anyway, um, you know, when those singing shows get to those last few contestants, they are all so good and are giving their best. How do you pick? Who's to say who's better than the other? I know I'm kind of beating this to death a little bit. I was in two singing contests when I was in high school. I won one of them and I didn't win the other. And I wasn't any happier in the one that I won than the one that I lost. I just didn't like that a few individuals were deciding if I was better than another singer. Now, in the music business, you will have auditions. You will have to compete with other singers perhaps to get a part in a play. You might be trying to get a recording contract and you need to impress the record companies, or whatever they call them now, uh, to, 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 take, to take a chance on you. Back in the day, we had to audition for clubs. We had to audition for agents. It was not fun, but I hated it, but we did it. But once we get the job, then I could relax into it and do my job and keep an, an audience attentive. It was so fun. It was different every night because the audience was different every night and you learn the vibe of, of the audience. I got to be myself and, and the ones who wanted to see me were the ones who came and they would follow us from place to place. And if they didn't like my singing, they would go and watch someone else who, who they did like. And I was very okay with that. So here's my point. Yes, you will be in competitive situations but let each one just be a learning process. It doesn't define you as an artist. I also want to encourage you not to be jealous of other singers who you think might be better than you. Celebrate with them as they succeed. You are not a threat to them and they are not a threat to you. 
don't let whoever's in charge make you feel that that's the case. Singing in and of itself is not a competition. It's an expression. It's you connecting to your own heart. It's you connecting to other hearts. Singing is a part of our humanity. And singing is fun. So here's my technique tip for this video this week. Be sure to work some joyful singing into your practice every time. Sing for fun. Sometimes sing silliness. Sometimes just sing goofy things. And sing some songs that you just love, whether you're going to perform them or not. They're just songs you love. You might be working on a song with your teacher, perhaps for an audition. Yes, take that very seriously and do the work. But don't forget to balance your practice time with joy. Sing a song while imagining a huge audience listening to you and cheering for you. Smile, take a bow, and relish in that beautiful energy. And give no thought to any bad moments that you sang. It's already been done. Just practice the joy. Practice the joy. That's my point. Thank you so much for listening and letting me share my thoughts on this. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. So be sure to put them in the comments below. I would also so appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And to find out more about me, you can go to my website, ritacastillovoice.com. Uh, you can connect with me there. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram at Rita Castillo Voice. As I always say, stay brilliant and sing on. Bye for now.